Hi guys, Nick here. Today we're taking a look at uh, a basic uh, oil filter, fuel filter and air filter service on my Toyota Coaster uh, 1995 model with the 1HZ engine. Um, my partner and I, Eliza, have been travelling around Australia now for six or seven months. We've probably done about 15,000 kilometres. Uh, I've done a couple of services uh, in that time as well. And I've also had quite a few questions as we've been going around um, as to sort of just basic RV stuff, uh, emptying the cassette toilet, all that sort of thing. Um, so I thought I would put together a couple of little videos, maybe a series of videos uh, to show um, to show the absolute basics. Now, I'm not a qualified mechanic or anything like that. This sort of stuff's really quite easy to do once you get the confidence um, to do it. So hopefully this video will explain, um, explain a little bit about that and help you get through some of the basics. So first things I've got set out in front of the van just to make sure that uh, I have everything that I need. Um, we've got some Toyota genuine parts, genuine air filter, fuel filter and oil filter. Um, we've got the Penrite uh, oil there. The bus takes I think 9.6 litres of oil so I've got a 10 litre drum and I also have 5 litres spare in the back to top up. Um, I have my trolley jack here. This is 3 tonne capacity. The bus weighs 4.5 tonne. Um, fully loaded, so uh, using the three ton should be plenty of uh, plenty of capacity there because we're only lifting up the front. We've got the axle stands, which are three ton rated each, uh, which should be plenty because you're not going to have three ton on either of the front corners. Um, and we've got various tools and rags, uh, a bit of cardboard as well to put underneath to catch any spills. Um, and we've also got an oil drain pan as well to catch the catch the oil when it comes out of the sump. So I'll get the bus jacked up. Um, you can probably uh, find some information on safe jacking principles um, on YouTube as well and I'll maybe try and link a video to that uh, at the same time to help you out with that. Um, but I'll get started and I'll come back to the video in a second. We're inside the cab here, engine cover in the middle uh, and the front of the engine cover as well. We'll take these two off. That gives us access to the oil filler cap which will open before we, uh, before we drain the oil. And both panels off. Oil filler cap is off. I just kind of hung that um, rag over it just to stop any anything any debris getting in the the oil filler cap. Um, we've also run the engine for five minutes or something just to let it warm up. Um, I don't want it too hot. It's literally like you know it's it's not even hot to touch. So that just helps get the oil um, a little thinned out and it'll help it drain out. We're underneath the bus now. We've opened up the uh, the oil cap in the top. Um, I've got my drain uh, catcher, the tub this is 13 litres, so uh, at least 3 litres over the capacity <coughs> of the sump here. And a uh, 14mm socket, that'll take the, the sump plug off at the back here and we'll drain it out. Okay, so that's cracked it now. I did this before, put a new washer in there. <coughs> so, ideally you don't want to lose uh, your sump plug in the in the pan here. Uh, and the trajectory of the oil is going to go back, it won't come straight out to start with, okay? So, we'll just catch that and also make sure we've got the washer. The new washer comes with a Toyota Genuine filter. Uh, that's just starting to go now, so I'll get that off and I'll try and get it away quickly and see if I can do this without too much mess. How about that? Okay, so if I position it there, it's not going to go any further back and it's only going to drain forwards a little bit. It's only got a little bit of oil on me, that's quite good. A uh, bit of cardboard down there underneath the, the tub just to catch the, the spills on the outside. I can stick that there. This will take a few minutes to drain out. And we'll take the, the oil filter off as well. Back in the bus. Uh, don't know if you can tell but I'm absolutely sweating. Uh, hot summer's day in Queensland here. Um, just going to show you where the fuel filter is in the engine bay. Okay, so you're looking at the top of the engine and then down underneath the dipstick there on the left hand side, this one's black, uh, Ryko one I think, but we're changing that for a genuine Toyota filter. Um, 
got a couple of rags with me so I'll stick that underneath the, the oil filter as I do that and pull it off and just catch any of the excess. Forgot to say, remember your oil filter wrench. You can slide this in and round and work it and then uh, clamp it to uh, loosen it uh, on the thing. It's kind of like a self clamping device like that. Um, I put this on and you only nip them up kind of hand tighten a little bit more so hopefully this will come off pretty easy. By far the messiest part of this job <clears throat> I think it's taking the the old filter out um, considering it sits upside down at an angle like that um, <clears throat> so you just got to try your best to catch what you can uh, coming out the bottom of it with a rag uh, new genuine Toyota filter element comes with a uh, little sump plug uh, washer in the front of it so save that keep that uh, I've got plenty of uh, oil here just to lube the o-ring um, which I'll have to try and tidy up down there now I don't think this is a very clean job but you might save yourself some money uh, if you can do this uh, rather than taking it to a uh, taking it to a dealership or anything like that or a garage they might charge I've seen prices quoted you know in 600 bucks 650 700 so um, maybe a couple hundred uh, bucks for parts just take your time um, and see how you go the oil filter is now on uh, like I said, genuine Toyota filter element. Um, it goes on nice and easy. Left hand side of the engine when you're looking at it from the top here, and it's just a, a screw on, just a thread on. Uh, normal normal thread, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, nip it up hand tight, and then I'll maybe just give it a little uh, a little nip up with the with the filter wrench, but nothing nothing too much. Once it's on, I've given it a clean <clears throat> round it just to catch any of the little bits of oil uh, that were dripping out of there when I took the old one off um, like I said it's an, an inverted uh, oil filter the way it's sitting so when you take it off there's you know you're bound to get something coming out of it reason I've cleaned around underneath it uh, is really so you can check if there's any leaks coming out of it at any point oil filter is on um, I've just checked the, the oil pan underneath uh, there's nothing left in that uh, draining out of it now so or into it sorry um, so we're good to go, I'll put the, the new uh, sump plug washer on, uh, tighten up the, the sump plug um, and I'll give that a clean up again so I can see underneath uh, at the sump plug whether there's any leaks uh, in the future. Um, we'll then uh, check what we've got in the oil pan, so how much oil's come out that's got kind of uh, graduated markers on the edge uh, right up to 13 litres so I should get a good idea. You know, naturally there'll still be a little left in the sump, I don't think you'll get it all out. Um, so I'll start off by trying to put in that much again because I check the oil every day before we set off um, while we're travelling. So I know that the level was pretty good uh, when I returned here. So if I put in that much I should be uh, within the ballpark and then uh, I'll, I'll check it and top it up from there <coughs> on level ground. What I would say actually with the, the 1HZ uh, is that it's quite sensitive to, to level ground as to what reading you get on your dipstick uh, from what I've found out on my way around um, so six months of checking it every day you kind of get to know uh, whether you're going to get an accurate uh, reading or not so uh, just bear that in mind also quick tip with the cardboard uh, underneath the, the oil pan it's really easy to slide kind of slide it out uh, I don't have to go back under the bus just now uh, I'll find out how much is in there um, and then I'll put the cardboard probably back under just to catch any drips that were coming out from taking the, uh, the oil filter off. Um, here's the here's the old one. Looks all good. Uh, just got a rubbish bag here to catch catch it, and then I'll stick this into the into the oil pan too. I've checked the <coughs> dropped the oil out of the uh, oil filter into the the, the drain pan. Um, we're probably just shy of nine nine liters there, which probably not too bad maybe half a litre or something in the bottom of the sump uh, that we just couldn't get out. I've also checked the end of the sump plug here which is magnetic, uh, nice and clean which is a good sign if you see um, any metal shavings or sort of particles on that that's when you've got to start investigating probably time to call a good mechanic um, and see if you can save it. We're back inside now, ready to start topping up the oil. Uh, like I said, I've got this 5 litre uh, drum which I'm going to use actually, rather than the 10. 
because I think <coughs> the markings are better on the front and you can actually see a bit clearer what you're up to. So uh, I'm going to put this in, uh, we're going to top it up about just shy of nine to start with, maybe half, eight and a half, and then I'm going to top it up gradually from there. Uh, we've got a filter, uh, you know, a spout in there, big funnel, just from super cheap, uh oh, uh, hopefully no mess. Good tip with these type of bottles is to pour it on its side like that and it doesn't uh, glug and you don't get that overshooting uh, back out the other side. Probably about eight and a half, nine litres of oil in. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, leave the final top ups till I've got it a bit more level back down on the ground. At the moment it's on axle stand so it's leaning back, I'm not getting an accurate reading and I don't want to over fill it because then you have to drain it again and, and, and redo it all. So I'm going to look at the air filter next. Um, so we'll drop that out, see, inspect it, see how dirty it is. It's probably been about just over 10,000, maybe 12,000 Ks since that was last changed. Um, and we'll put a, a genuine Toyota one back in its place. This is uh, the oil filter housing. And we are in front of the driver's side front wheel. Um, these hooks here, you unscrew the butterfly uh, there and then it just comes out and there's three of those, one around the back, one on this side and one here. Underneath the housing we have another uh, like a wing nut um, holding the actual filter in place that you can see there. This is a filter element out on the floor uh, and this was changed by uh, Overland Mechanical Services in Brisbane um, when I had it in there, had the radiator replaced, etc. They've actually written on top, which is quite a good idea, the day it was changed in the case. Um, so we're about two, 2.95 or 7 or something on the clock now. Um, really clean on the inside, actually. Not a lot of dust or anything, so that's that's really good. Um, so I'm going to swap the new Toyota one in, and I'll probably write on the top of it when I serviced it as well. Side by side here. Toyota Denso genuine uh, air filter for the, the 1HZ. Uh, doesn't look a lot different, maybe uh, perhaps thicker element, more filtration perhaps, but looks good. It's actually a bit lighter to be honest by feel. Um, so we'll get that in and we will write on it when we've uh, when we've stuck it up. Okay, so good practice, I think. Um, that'll take from the guys there, the professionals. Uh, new, the kilometres, 297.438, and today's date. Um, fitting is obviously just reversal uh, of taking out and putting back together, really, really easy. So, there's a little bit of uh, dust in the bottom, uh, outer housing, and just ever so slightly, you can maybe see where I've rubbed it with my finger, slight dusting uh, on the internal holder support for the for the filter, so we'll clean that up um, so it's all nice and clean when it goes back together. Just giving both of these a rub down now, uh, there was quite a bit of dust actually in the bottom of this but not too bad, uh, so that's all cleared out now and again the internal support plate uh, is nice and clean as well. Last up then we're going to change the fuel filter, um, it's basically behind the battery box underneath the, the door a bit, I'll try and show you how to get to it. Um, if you've got the owner's manual, there's a good description in there. Bit tricky when I don't have uh, a ramp or anything like a garage, you know, poster lift where I could get this up, but um, I'm just about slim enough to get in there, so we'll give it a shot. Um, I've written on the, the fuel filter as well, I've written the mileage or the kilometres on the bus um, and also the date, today's date, which is good practice, which I'll probably continue from now on. Toyota Genuine Filter uh, for the fuel filter, there's the part number. I've uh, got a filter wrench, uh, some grips, a couple of screwdrivers here. Um, here's the filter, and uh, when I was inside, I wrote the the case on it and the date. So it looks a little tricky for getting it out. Um, it's kind of tight for access under here, uh, but we'll see how we go. Um, and I think there's two ways you can do this if you watch other videos. Um, on YouTube there's loads of videos for uh, fuel filter changes for uh, the 1HZ um, but specifically I'll try and show you the location um, of it on the Toyota Coaster um, and uh, we'll take it from there but uh, we'll show you what we can what we can see under the bus. 
Here's the fella we're looking for just now. That's the fuel filter there, with the drain on the bottom of it. Um, and you've got your primer pump on the top there. I don't think we'll be able to see that. Um, what I'll do <coughs> is I'm going to take the filter out, unscrew the bottom section. Uh, we're probably going to get a bit draining out here, but I've not got anything to catch it. Uh, and then we'll swap this over onto the new filter. We'll put the O-ring on that's supplied uh, with the Toyota Genuine filter. Um, and we'll use a bit of the diesel that's in here just to uh, kind of lubricate it a little. Um, and then we'll fit it back up and use the primer pump on top to pump it up until uh, you've got good resistance there. Then you you know you're, you've got all the air out of the system. So, fuel filter turned out to be a bit of a bugger. It's now sunset. Uh, maybe better if I stand this way. Um, so what happened was went underneath uh, Mine seemed to be absolutely welded on, so they probably didn't uh, put some diesel around the uh, around the sort of O-ring and stuff there when they put it on. Um, so basically, that took me a bit a bit longer than I thought to get off, and by a bit longer, I mean a couple of hours um, wrestling underneath trying to get that off, uh, thinking about what I was going to do. I actually asked on a couple of forums um, that I use and. Hopefully some of the guys will be watching this, uh, so thank you very much. Um, on Facebook we've got Toyota Coaster Owners Group, that was pretty helpful. Uh, Aussie Coaster Mates and uh, Toyota Coaster Lovers of Australia, which is three of the main groups um, on there and always very helpful. So uh, I probably would advise that <coughs> that if you've got something, you know, like a, uh, a Land Cruiser or anything like that, you'll find loads of groups on Facebook or forums etc that are happy to help and have probably come across this before so I'll show you the um, show you the aftermath of the fuel filter stabbed to death with the big Stanley screwdriver um, I actually took the whole uh, filter housing off uh, it disconnected the fuel lines either side uh, and took it across to the shed in the vise hammered that through and that got me leverage on either side so I've made sure to uh, kind of lubricate a little bit here when I put it back on um, and it's only hand tight in a, in a little bit so hopefully next time I go to take it off I'll not have to do all that um, but we're good, we primed it back up afterwards, there's a pump on top bit awkward to get your hands in but you can do it uh, and if I can pump it up, having taken the lines off if you manage just to swap the filter out and back in you should be sound um, we've had it, I've dropped it back down, started it up everything sounds fine. I'm going to do a check around now to see if anything's leaking. I'll let it uh, drain a little bit. I'll check the oil level um, because it will have filled the, the oil filter now um, and we should be good to go. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like it, give it a, give it a thumbs up uh, and if you've got any other suggestions of anything you want to see specifically to do with camper vans, motorhomes, RVs, just the basic stuff. Uh, if you're new to it all, uh, then give me a shout or leave a, a note in the comments and uh, I'll see what I can do to help you out. I don't pretend to know everything but I've uh, done quite a lot and when you've done six or seven months and grew up uh, with camper vans and motor phones as a child and uh, my dad taught us a lot of stuff so uh, everyone starts somewhere and not everyone knows everything so give us a shout if uh, you've got any questions. Cheers!